You know, the more I think about it, the more I realize how much I like penny roll hunting. It's not an activity for, uh, well, I shouldn't say, I was going to say it's not an activity for a lazy person, but I guess somebody who is not um, serious about the hobby or the activity, I guess you could, you could, you know, you can cut corners just like anything in life. So I think that's part of the reason why I said I like penny roll hunting, because in a sense, it's a microcosm of life. And you might say, why would I say that? Well, what am I? I'm a... Am I a Gen X? What's what's the uh you're born in the 70s? What generation are you are? 70s generation. Yeah, yeah, I'm Gen X. As a children in the 70s, yeah. So I'm a gen I'm a Gen X. And Gen Xers, we are we are a weird group, right? Because we're children, mostly, of the result of people from the 50s. And the 50s, compared to today, right? If you watch, by the way, just a quick, so this is episode, uh, what is it? Uh, episode uh, 230. These are the special basement rolls. Ah, they don't smell like basement anymore because my, my room is so dry. And uh, if these are all copper, we hit pay dirt again. Uh, these are some of, if that's a copper, I can't even see it, but that these are coppers, the ones that are real bright. <laughs> they work between a dollar and five bucks. Easy. Okay. So Gen Xers were, were children of, of people from the 50s, right? Our uh, parents are in their 70s, 80s, 90s. And um, the 50s, if you're a young person watching this video, watch some of the, and you don't know any, and you don't know anything about the 50s, okay? So obviously, if you're, if you're very familiar, if you're a young person and you're, for some reason, you've watched a lot of Leave it to Beaver, um, Hogan's Heroes, Abbott and Costello, Humphrey Bogart, black and white shows. If you watched a lot of black and white movies, TV shows, let me tell you something. They're very representative. Cinema is very representative of the, um, the current state of events in the country. And that's all it is, too. It's not a judgment. It's just that's a fact. <laughs> and very interesting. I have to look at this. All of the all of the South in the uh, in the motto. All of the South, all of it. The I, the N, the G, O, D, the W, E, the the whole motto. Oh, and the six, that's weird, to the south. No, and there's even a little die chip on the left of one of the sixes. First pen. Yeah, this is going to have to be um, episodes. If, if this is the way it's going to be again, and I'm going to use coin, uh, copper coins to, yeah, you can see all the, all the whatever. See, you can't tell if it's doubling or not. Um, excuse me. You can't tell if it is um, featured unless you're in the um, the website. So I should have had it open. All right, so let's go to um, right Lincoln Sense Date Guide, and let's go to 1966. 
And I guess after you do this enough, you begin to learn. All right. So the only thing on the 1966 DDO is the U. Yeah. And I'll show you. All right. So here the 1966 DDO, right? There's a, they're, they're the same one, right? PDDO, PDDO, right? It's a P. There's only one thing there. And it's the U. And it's a pretty obvious, and it says moderate. And God, we, oh, a moderate CCW spread shown on In God We Trust. The date, the lower, the vest, the eyelid. Oh, okay. So there is a moderate, maybe this is very common, I don't know. See, that becomes the question, right? And you can see it all over there. If you want to call that a spread. I mean, I guess that's what the guy from Copper Coins is calling it, a spread. Even though his U, his example is the U. And there's only one U, so let's look at it. I guess that's his, probably his favorite picture that he got. But my U is spread to the south. Again, I don't have it under a microscope. But none of them are spread to the uh, to the west or left or whatever you want to call it. Let me look for the best example here I have. It's the N. The best example is the N. Right, let's look at it without the light. See if it gives better contrast. It does. So. So we're on the first penny and we're already spending this much time on it. <sighs> now, what does that mean? I'm not sure. I mean, a moderate spread shown in, in God we trust, which I have. Oh, it's moderate in, in some letters and mild in others. So anyway, I'm going to put that to the side irregardless. All right, so back to the story. I'm telling you, if these are, if these are all coppers, it's going to be ridiculous. Yeah. So if you're familiar, we're, we're children of people from the 50s. And... There's a good chance, you know, if you have, if you're second, third, fourth generation American, that, you know, um, your family was in the military. And the people from the 50s, a lot of their families were in the military also. So the fam, so, so the, the, the generation of the 50s, really was one of the most prosperous eras in U.S. history. I mean, you know, women were able to stay home. And uh, the husband, one person was able to go out and work. And um, nice rim. That's nice. And, um, you know, with a white collar job or a blue collar, excuse me, with a blue collar job, you can buy a house in a nice area. And that's the way things work, right? And, um, you know, drug use, generally speaking, was frowned upon, seriously frowned upon. It's another 66. A lot of these pennies from this roll, these rolls are from the 60s. That's what's making them so interesting. And they're. And most of them are, oh, this one's less so than the last one. So I won't, we'll look at the other letters and stuff. And of course, we're looking for a really nice doubling. All right. I'll put that into the AU. So we have a MS and AU and a fine so far. Everything's copper. Wow, man. This is, this is something else. This is something else. So, 
then came the 60s and the 70s and um you know my my parents were basically um part of that my father was in vietnam um my grandfather was in world war ii and um my wow, what a beauty and but uh what's that flower pot you know the movement in the 70s let's call it the 60s late 60s 70s vietnam and all that was heavy drugs and um no floating roof and Kind of like a rebellion against the 50s. You know, do whatever you want. The family, you know, began to disintegrate. You know, wasn't that important? Hot divorce was, you know, rampant. And my generate generation x which is a what a great name man i mean generation to me generation x is like the no the nobody generation that you know you're not from one generation you're, you're you're in limbo generation x what a great great name perfect you know 70s were I remember being in the car with my father waiting on on line for gas and we had a gas station right on the corner I must have been about four years old or five years old people used to drive around the drive their cars around with you know beer hanging out the window stuff like that that's that's the kind of stuff that went on in the 70s um, drug overdoses right on the street I mean if you think things are bad now, man, the images I have of the 70s are horrific as a little kid. <clears throat> so far, we, I just have one. I'm moving a lot quicker th through this one, believe it or not, even though I'm hope it's not because I'm missing anything. I don't think I am. Even though I'm talking, I'm learning how to do both those things at the same time. So I guess if I was to say, you know, sum that up, our values, Generation X values, right? So even the one, the, the, my, my parents' generation, their values were way different than, um, what a beauty. What an absolute stunner. Way different than the previous. One generation was about being wearing a shirt and tie every day. I mean, on, on the week, they, you went to the store. In the 50s, you went to the store with a shirt and tie, man, pants and shoes. You know, and then the 70s came around. It was about, you know, a, a total rebellion against that, right? This one's actually so orange. What a gift we got from uh, whoever brought these these pennies to um, to the bank. Absolute gift. <clears throat> so back to Gen X. Yeah, so we're kind of like a lost, you know, computers came out, video games, um, technology. And the uh, the ethic, the ethic of the fifties, in many ways, um, wow, um, disappeared. Unless I'm talking about, from, if you're especially if you're from the city, obviously. Not I don't want to say obviously, but 
you know, if you came from a different type of culture or a different town or a family with strong values, then maybe, you know, that got passed down, you know, higher education, things of that nature. What a stunner. But in a lot of ways, the um, the culture was uh, vastly changed. See, now I just want to look at the U. Let me look at this under the loop. Oh, yeah, the W. The N again. Uh, there's a nice, uh, there's a nice line in the. T oh, the Liberty looks good too. How about the the date? Oh, we got doubling on the date all over the place. Oh, look at this. The whole, the whole obverse has Dublin. Every feature. I don't know about the. I don't know about his his eye or anything like that. Let me see. All right, so it's in the four. The bottom. The bottom of the four, you can see it. Very obvious, the bottom of the four. Okay. And I saw it most obvious in the uh, the W and the N. And then, look at that R and T. is be absolutely beautiful. All right. So we saw some features on the obverse. I'll just jump back and forth between my uh, stream of consciousness and... Uh, and uh, copper coins over here. So let's go to 64. All right. And we're going to go to DDO again. Oh, this one does show the, um, a lot of them are the, I mean, so there are four pages with like four or five on each. Uh, let me see. So it starts, so it really, what, I'm going to read it to you, then we'll, we'll look at it. Oh, look at that L. Nice. Strong doubling seen in the top of the L in Liberty. Oh, okay. Strong spread as a bar under the L. Uh, we got we got the bar on uh, the T. Uh, let me look to see if there's any bars there. Okay, so there. this part is focusing on the... Uh, huh. This one has a bar in the T. I ha it's a little dirty. I have to clean it. Let me get the cloth out. So the values were very different between the 50s and the 70s. And then, of course, <laughs> it just continued uh, to change between the 70s, 80s, 90s, and current time. All right now we got the... Gen, uh, Gen Z. Is there a Y in there somewhere? X, Y, Z. All right. Oh, yeah. So the four, you see it really good there. Let's see if I can get it perpendicular. That's, that's going to be a nice... Let me put the light on, maybe for a thumbnail. No, it looks better without the light. Eh. There's a joke in there somewhere. All right. Either way, I'm putting it to the bottom. Let me see what we got. Um, uh, another of uh, the bar L varieties of the year. I just want to see if there's anything for... Um, oh, there's the piece in the middle of the N. Do we have it in the, anything in the middle of the N? What I'll do is I'll look. No, I don't see anything in the middle of the N. If I find it, I'll show it. The UST, in addition to the bar, the crosslet of the four in the date. So they do they do mention the crosslet of the four in the date, but they don't. I don't see the picture of it. All right, here we go. All right. Well, this one shows. Dub. This one I'll show it to you. What it says. So that's the crosslet, obviously, is the bottom part 
Oh, yeah. Is it on a top, too? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a great, great doubling on the... Uh, the well, we're gonna, we know now it's called a crosslet. I cleaned it a little bit. The bottom left of the crosslet. Ah, oh, what a great, great doubling that is. So I'll show you what it's, what they show on uh, Copper Coins. And um, let's see if we see another one. That's the T. See, they... Some of them talk about the four, but then they don't show it. Here's another one. It's, it's definitely not MS condition. It's probably more like uh, AU50, maybe. Um, but again, ours is over here. Crosslet. And our doubling is southwest. But very nice, very nice doubling on the crosslet of the four in the 1964. All right. And then, in my opinion, and I'm just going to be blunt, you know, oh no, this is a 74. This generation is just straight up lazy. You know, um, my generation was like, which which direction are you going to go? Which is why Generation X is perfect name for it. Are you going to go? Are you going to go the lazy route, or are you going to go to school? Or are you going to you know become a uh, a tradesman? That's a beauty. Um, I picked the school. I know a lot of people who pick tradesmen, and then I basically you know. People who did nothing with their life, I kind of didn't really hang out with them too much. All right. So. That's what I think about this current generation. This this is, if I don't even know why I called X. They shouldn't even, this generation be, should be called X, not Z. Because they're lo totally lost. They have no idea where, the, where their future is, where they're going. Um, which is why, you know, um, a family is so important because it, it, it takes, it really takes so many people to, um, oh, I just love how it's in the rim like that. It takes so many people to, to rate, you know, to, to guide a child, you know, that's my opinion, right? And believe me, I was, I'm not the father of the century. I'm the first person to admit it. And I talk to my son about that all the time, you know. I would love to have done things better or go back in time. But, you know, I think everybody probably would. Wow. Or most people, anyway. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut this into probably two. Well, we'll see. I'm only at twenty three minutes. Maybe I'll just finish with this, with that, with my thought and how all this relates to penny roll hunting, right? Because that's really where I was going. So, how does this all relate to penny roll hunting? Like I said in the beginning of the video. Because what I'm not now that I have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers, I'm you know I see behaviors surface, you know, and the one that I'm most disappointed in is, you know, um, the questions where. Somebody could do a, a very minimal amount of work themselves to come up with the answer. So, you know, instead of saying, hey, look, I saw this at this place, you know, like, like instead of people showing me the work that they're putting into the craft of penny roll hunting, they just, hey, how much is this worth? What's that? Do you want to buy this from me? You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of laziness. And um, and I could have take, taken that route also, right? 
I mean, do a penny roll hunt here, do a penny roll there. I'm just saying as a creator, I'm not saying as a person, as a creator, but I didn't. I put so much time and effort into, into what I'm doing. And if you watch my videos from, from the beginning, right, from months, from, from December of 2023, if you've been watching my videos, you'll see the time and effort that I put into penny roll hunting. And I would have to say, even though I'm a Gen X, I'm much more attuned to the, the generation before my fathers, right? What generation is that? Oh, I believe it's called the greatest generation. That's so crazy. I think that's what it's called. Let me see. Uh, if you're born, no, no, if you, if you know, you're born in the thirties to, to be an adult in the fifties, if you're born in the thirties, adult in fifties, what generation are you in? If you were born between the 30s and you're in the 50s, you're likely part of the silent generation. Okay, which is defined as people born between 1925 and 1945. Okay. All right, so what's, what's the greatest? I don't know where I got that from. The greatest generation. Ah, the greatest generation in terms used to be Americans born between 1901 and 1927. Okay. If you were born in 19, if you were, okay, so if you're born in the lighter part of the 1927, of the 20s, yeah, then you're still, you're an adult in the 50s. Um, who came from World War, World War II, okay, and the Great Depression. Anyway, I consider myself more in my mind, more akin to the people from that gener from that generation, in my opinion. I prefer to work all the time. I prefer to work through problems. Um, I have uh, strong spiritual beliefs. And I think I think and I hope that it shows in everything I do including penny roll hunting including this i hope that my determination to learn and be better shows in something as small as penny roll hunting and um so I try to be better all the time. Sometimes I'm not. I fail a lot. But there are times when I do I do persevere. Right? So even something small like using copper coins. Um one of uh my first member, Eric from uh Kenai Collectibles, he he showed me approval for, for you know for my development. And that, that meant something to me. Same thing with Otis, same thing with all my members. And to me, that's just, you know, that's, those are the qualities that I think are very important. And um, anybody who shows determination with penny roll hunting, you could learn them too, right? So, that's all. And being nice to each other and kind to each other and all those other things that um, is so important in uh, Christianity. And if you're a Christ believer, right, love your neighbors. So I try to, I try to imp incorporate that into my life. And penny roll hunting now is part of my life. I do it on a, almost a daily basis. You know, we're going to hit 10,000 subscribers in the next couple months. And um, so I guess it's important to me. All right. So thank you. I'm going to, this is going to be part one, episode um, 230. We're going to finish off the roll. 
but you can't see from there. I mean, it's huge. And um, I've changed the subject. Um, I'm not sure how uh, how people gravitate to that message or not, but you know. Um, I guess it's my attempt to to show how important uh, I view the subject matter, even though it's a penny or a cent. <laughs>